All right, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be going through Chapter 5, Section 1, and we're going to be talking about all the different properties of parallelograms. And by the end of this video, we should be able to apply the definition of a parallelogram and the theorems about properties of a parallelogram. So please have out your guide and notes, and let's begin. So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. That's what's going to be a parallelogram. Hence the name parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel. So in parallelogram ABCD, we know segment AB is parallel to segment DC, and segment AD is parallel to segment BC. Note the different pairs of parallel lines here in our diagram. AD and BC have one arrow on the segments. AB and DC have two arrows on the segments. So we would know by looking at the diagram that those are our two pairs of parallel lines. And the properties of parallel lines apply when working with parallelograms, since parallelograms have parallel sides. So this is going to mean if we have parallel lines and we think back to having cut by a transversal, some of those properties are going to be handy to know when working with parallelograms. We're also going to know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So going back to the diagram at the top right, segment AB would be congruent to segment DC, and segment AD would be congruent to segment BC. We're also going to know that opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So going back to that diagram, angle A and angle C would be congruent, angle B and angle D would be congruent, and lastly, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So when we draw those two diagonals, their point of intersection bisects both of those diagonals. So each diagonal is then split into two congruent pieces. Let's go through an example involving some algebra here on those topics. So in example one, problem A, in parallelogram HIJK, the length of HM is equal to 2x plus 5, and the length of mj is equal to 4x minus 19, and we want to find the value of x. For part b, we're asked in parallelogram hijk, the measure of angle 2 is equal to 25 degrees, and the measure of angle hij is equal to 120 degrees, and we want to find the measure of angle 3. So let's go through part a first. So the solution for part a is we're going to know that the length of HM is equal to length of MJ since the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Once we know that, we can substitute in our values. We end up with 2x plus 5 is equal to 4x minus 19, and we solve for x and we get the value of x being 12. Let's talk about part B before we move on anywhere else. So we know that measure of angle 2 is 25. We know the measure of HIJ is 120. So HIJ, let's do that in green. Let's actually do what I asked you to do here, Smartboard. Thank you. So HIJ, that entire angle, is 120 degrees. Well, if we think back to properties of parallelograms here, we would know that the measure of angle HIJ plus the measure of angle IHK is equal to 180 degrees. Because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So we know that angle IHK is composed of measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle 4. So really, when we substitute in some values here, HIJ, that green value, is 120. So we have 120 plus whatever the measure of IHK is, that's going to give us 180. So if we subtract 120 on each side, we find out that the measure of angle IHK is 60 degrees. But again, remember, IHK is composed of angle 2 and angle 4. So really, we have 60 is equal to now 25 plus the measure of angle 4, because the measure of angle 2 was 25. So that was a multi-step 
problem there. And when we solve for the measure of angle 4, we get um, 35. And we would be able to say that the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 3 because if we have parallel lines and we're cut by a transversal, HJ or JH would be that transversal, then we're going to have alternate interior angles be congruent. So we solved for 4. And then we applied it to 3. We could have started by saying, hey, well, I know the measure of angle 2 should be congruent to the measure of angle 1 because, again, if JH is that transversal, 1 and 2 are going to be alternate interior angles. So that was another way to go about it. But that was a multi-step problem, and you did really, really well with that. With that, please work on problems 1 through 13 on the guided notes. I resume when you're ready to move forward. So in example number two, we are going to be talking about a proof here. We are given that we have parallelogram A, B, C, D. And we know the that angle one is congruent to angle two, which means the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. And eventually, we want to prove that segment AX is congruent to segment YC, or the length of AX is equal to the length of YC, six to one, half a dozen the other. Well. Let's talk about working backwards for this proof. We'd be able to prove that AX is congruent to YC if we can show that the triangles that contain them are congruent. Well, we can show that these two triangles could be congruent by using ASA, since we know angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and then we have a parallelogram. So it is possible to show that we have by A, S, A. So with that in mind, please work on problems 14 and 15. 14 is the proof of example number two. Now that we talk through a quick little plan, you should be able to do it. And 15 is another proof. Keep up the great work. If you have any questions, please let us know. Keep making yourself proud. We'll talk to you soon.